all right so welcome back to today's video and in today's video we are going to be looking at progressive wave i have treated uh, stationary wave so if you missed that video please after this video you can go back and watch all right so now a progressive wave is any wave that spreads out from a vibrating source transmitting energy from one point to another take for example you have a rope and you hold the rope and you're skipping it like this the rope is moving like this you see that is that vibration will be transmitted from one point to another that is actually a progressive wave so a progressive wave is actually a wave that is moving from one point to another stationary wave is just standing but progressive wave is actually moving so in progressive wave you have something like this let's say this is the anchor of the rope then as you throw the rope, it will be moving like this. Moving, 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 moving. Now, this is what we call our progressive wave. So progressive wave is wave that spreads out from a vibrating source and moves to a medium, transferring energy as it travels. So in progressive wave, energy is transferred as it travels. Now this topic is very, very important and i'm going to be laying some foundation now in our previous video we looked at frequency we looked at frequency as the number of cycles per second and we looked at the relationship between frequency and period we said period is equal to one over frequency if period is one over frequency this simply means that frequency is 1 over period 2. So you see the relationship between two of them. And also in last video, we said V, the velocity of a wave, is equal to the wavelength over what? Period. And since period, in, uh, if you look at this, this is the same thing as writing it this way. V equal to lambda times 1 over T. Right? Because lambda times 1 is T lambda over T. So V is equal to lambda, 1 over T is what? Frequency. So any of this formula, this or this, can go for, can go for velocity of a wave. Now look at this equation. From past equation, the equation says calculate, calculate the frequency of a radio wave of a radio wave of 150 meters in brackets velocity of all electromagnetic waves in free space is 3 times 10 raised to power 8 meter per second now, even if you are not giving this one in bracket, please take note that all electromagnetic waves, including light, the velocity of light, is 3 times 10 raised to power 8 meters per second. So in this equation, we are asked to calculate the frequency. Please, we are going to be taking the universal equation in this uh, topic. Well, I'm, I'm giving an introduction. So calculate the frequency of a radio wave of 150 meters. The unit should tell you that this is the wavelength. Because wavelength is in meters. Then we are given velocity as 3 times 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second. And we are asked to calculate the, the frequency. But you remember that B is equal to F lambda, right? Remember this. You know, whether you write this one first or you write this one first, it doesn't matter because it's multiplication. Now V is equal to, we're actually giving V, we're giving lambda, we're asked to calculate F. So we can make F the subject of the formula. Making F the subject of the formula, we have F equal to what? We divide both sides by lambda. So V all over lambda. So F will be, V was given as what? 3 times 10 raised to power 8 all over, lambda was given as what? 150. So the answer to that is... 2 times 10 raised to the power 6 hertz. Because the unit of frequency is actually hertz or per second. So you say 2 times 10 raised to the power 6 hertz or you say per second. Alright. So basically, that
that is the answer to that question. So with this, you can actually use that to uh, solve different other questions. So, but basically, I'll be looking at something very important in this topic. I don't want to make the video very long. If you notice, I'm making this video in the ninth because the exam is close. All right, so I will be taking something very important. So take note, take, pay great attention to this one I want to take now. All right, so let's look at the relationship between C, F, lambda, V, and W, omega. All right, relationship between period, frequency, wavelength, and velocity, and angular velocity. So this omega, this thing that looks like W, is angular velocity. Now the equation that relates them is Y equal to A sine omega T. Y is displacement on the Y axis. Y axis that is the vertical direction. A is amplitude. Then this is angular velocity and this is time. But notice that omega is always 2 pi over what? 2 pi over t. That is the formula for, that is omega. 2 pi over t. So if I want to uh, stress this further, you notice that this is same thing as saying 2 pi times 1 over t, right? Because 2 pi times 1 is t is over t. But recall that 1 over t is what? Is f. Frequency is 1 over period. So w is equal to, please if you didn't watch the other video, do well to watch it because I laid some foundation there. So angular velocity is equal to the same thing as saying 2 pi f, right? 2 pi f because this stuff here, this whole stuff here is f. So if I want to bring that into this equation, I'll be having y equal to a sine 2 pi f t. Where this 2 pi f is a w, 2 pi f t. Do you get? If what you have in the equation is t, you can see use t, you can still put t there. Alright, so basically, this equation here is like the universal equation we can use. But we have another formula here that I will tell you when to use it. Y equal to A sine WT plus or minus KX. Alright, now, this stuff here, this, uh, this equation is used when the equation, when the wave is not considered from the origin, from zero. That's when we use this equation. K here is actually a constant. And X is actually displacement on the X axis. Y is displacement on the Y axis. So it can be plus or minus depending on the direction of the wave. If the wave is moving in the positive direction or in the negative direction. Alright, so basically... Uh, that is that. But now we have another one called the phase velocity. Please follow me. I'm heading somewhere. Phase velocity. Phase velocity. Now the phase velocity is given as so the phase velocity given as this is equal to this over k over k now basically i just rush through this because i'm heading somewhere now i will be using without uh, much grammar i'll be giving a practical question and in your exam we see how you apply them that is what really matters so i'll be giving a practical question and we see where to apply all these things so are we ready i know i rushed through this and i have my reasons for doing that i have my reasons for doing that all right so i'll be giving the question and I'll come down to explain that. All right. All right. I'll use this question to explain all I've been saying since. Now, find the frequency, phase velocity, and maximum particle velocity for the equation y equal to 10 sine into bracket 5t minus 3x. And the br bracket was closed. Now, anytime you see something like this, 
the very first thing you are to do is to write that general equation I gave you. The general equation, have it in your head. That general equation is y equal to a sine wt. It was plus or minus, but here they use minus. So minus what? Kx, right? Now, if you compare these two equations, you see that a amplitude is what? Amplitude is what? 10, right? So you just compare the two of them. This 5 is a what? It's a W. So it's, you can see now, W here is what? It's 5. Now if you look at this, this one is for K. So K is what? K is 3. You just compare and you get your values. Now the question says we should calculate the we should calculate the frequency. We should calculate the frequency F. So we have to calculate F. But you know that angular velocity is equal to 2 pi f. It's equal to 2 pi f. Now, f here, to make f the subject of the formula, f will be what? W all over 2 pi. So this will be W, which is omega is what? 5, right? Over 2 pi. So you now check how your option is. Now, in this case, the option was left in this format. So this is our frequency. You see, it's actually simple, right? Now, the next one, we were asked to calculate the phase velocity. I know phase velocity, I told you, phase velocity is equal to what? Phase velocity, what did I give you then? I gave you phase velocity as W over K. We already have W as psi. We already have K as 3. It means phase velocity is equal to W is what? 5 over 3. Then you check your option. Okay, they, they divided it in the option. So you actually check your options to know. So 5 divided by 3 will give us 1.6 watts, 6, 7 meters per second. That is your phase velocity. Phase velocity. Let me use, to avoid confusion, let me use phase, this to represent phase velocity. All right. The next thing we are asked to calculate is maximum particle velocity. Please, anytime you are asked to calculate maximum particle velocity, the maximum particle velocity is always the angular velocity the maximum particle velocity is given as angular velocity times amplitude. And angular velocity, we've seen it as 5, 5 times the amplitude, we've seen it as 10. So the maximum particle displacement is 50 meter per second. All right. So basically, this is how to go about this. There are different variations of this. But I want to keep the video short. Some persons requested for this copy. And the condition of recording this video, as I talked to you, is not very good. So I had to rush it up because uh, I had to just cut this part. But in a very good time, I will be taking this topic again. And I'll be taking it one after the other, step by step. But for now, this is where we will stop. Please, if you're not subscribed to my channel, click on the subscribe button and subscribe. I wish you success in your exam. See you in the next video.